time to start? <laughs> it's time for us to go into... <laughs> okay, so I'm a moderator. I have no idea what that means, but everyone here has... Where's my cheat sheet? Uh-oh. Somebody left this on the table up here from a different panel. Somebody wrote pen and ink, <laughs> which is something we have all done in telling stories and trying to articulate what it means to find yourself with a child and then have that baby. And so I want to welcome everyone here. Like I said, I'm legit because there's my kid, so I get to be the moderator. She's 40 something years old, I forgot. <laughs> And I think what we should do is, I don't know what this is all about. Oh, we get to see it here? Okay. Um, we should just introduce ourselves. And this is a pantheon of brilliant, wonderful women who have done some really cool, insightful, funny, fully dimensional, awesome stories about the experience of, like I just said, okay. So we we'll start over here. Hi, I'm Rachel Masalami, and I have been working for several years on a series called Nonpartum, which is online in Mother Magazine, and I'm excited about everything next to and around birth, and I am working really hard to write the actual birth comic. So that's coming soon. Um, my name is Lucy Nisley. I have a book out called Kid Gloves, which is about the process of getting pregnant, staying pregnant, and uh, nearly dying in childbirth, spoiler alert. <laughs> um, it's also about the history, the science, and the superstitions surrounding pregnancy and childbirth, and um, sort of uh, inadvertently talks about the broken medical system here in the States when it comes to mothers and babies. Um, my name's Lauren Weinstein, and um, I, uh, I so I wrote a, a whole 32-page uh, book about giving birth um, for the series <coughs> Frontier. Um, and I've done work online for years about uh, giving birth to, and not giving birth, just being a mom, uh, things involved with that, genetic testing, um, what it's like to balance work and motherhood. But this was like, the birthing story is a pretty profound thing, so I wanted to write about it. Uh, my name is Marty Galloway. Uh, I have a couple of books that are around um, caring for infants or being pregnant, but the book that contains my birth story is in uh, Slightly Plural, which is, um, I imagine it to be an ongoing series. It's short, uh, kind of poetic comics, um, kind of touching touching on and around a story that I feel is too big to tell linearly. Um, yeah. Oh, hi, I'm Megan Turbitt. Um, usually I make like vapid pop culture things, but um, recently I made a comic called Pregnant and Fired and um, Laughter Birth about my experience being fired from a job while I was pregnant and my experience giving birth um, and the weeks after that. You're not taking my job seriously. Somebody else has to do this. You're sitting here thinking and pushing a button. You're asking too much. You got that version of the That's okay. Okay. There's Lauren here. Really, who wants to be the volunteer? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Maybe. That's probably yeah. the, yeah. That was it. It was all the pictures. <laughs> That's what? There should be like, they said there was a bunch of pictures. Those were them. Those were them, yeah. That's not all? That's not everything. I think it was, yeah. Yeah, it was like yeah. one or two slides for everything. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if you can just start. That's why they don't ask me to do this. Okay. All right. So um, I don't know what moderation means because there is nothing in moderation when it comes to giving birth. Um, 
it's um, something that uh, who would like to address the uh, wait let's, let's go back to square one I would really like to talk about how it came to be the night that you thought yeah we're going to do this with so and so <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to avoid the question by saying you should move to my pictures because the, the one that we have up there is something I wrote called We Can See. And it's kind of about that, but avoiding that question at the same time. <laughs> so I think it's just perfect. My personal thing there. I think there's, there's one with my, a picture of my butt right sticking up in the air. <laughs> we can start with that one. Somewhere in there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so when I was drawing that, I was like, I'm definitely going to be standing here with a presentation and show it to everybody. That is a yoga pose that they said would help you conceive if you just sit around like that <laughs> afterwards. And I did that really religiously after having sex for a couple of years there. <laughs> so kind of uncomfortable. I'm sending Bill to fetch me some water or other things sitting around afterwards. And it's, not sexy at all. <laughs> and, um, so this this comic called We Conceive, it's kind of that idea like, oh, we're conceiving like me and my husband are conceiving. But it's really about my fears about my female friendship. So when I say we conceive, I'm actually saying we women conceive. And it really doesn't, I feel like it didn't have that much to do with Bill, the conception. <laughs> He's around, he got me water, and he definitely, you know, helped. <laughs> And that can be said for too. He was around, he got me water, and he did help. But it's kind of something that I felt like I did alone, but that I knew there were other women doing it at the same time all around me. And I was super scared that I would have to be friends with women I did not like because we happened to have conceived at the same time. <laughs> and it's hard enough to make friends when you're an adult without it being like, oh, this will be convenient for school and picking kids up. <laughs> It's so hard. So this is, this is what I think about when I say we conceive, I really think it's something that women do alone. And um, so I wanted to explore that more with comics and make it more about just center it completely selfishly on myself a little bit there. But then also try to trace how, how we control our own kids friendships later on too. And so later on in this comic, if you, if you, I don't know who should click or which direction, but <laughs> there's, um, it turns into a story about my very best friend growing up and how I felt we were meant to be together. And it was very romantic and I just loved her so much. And then she moved to Minnesota, <laughs> which is awful, right? Like <laughs> just the sound of that, even if you live in Minnesota, it seems like you've been sent away. So, um, but I thought about why we were actually friends and we were friends because we were born two days apart in the same hospital, and our moms were already friends. <laughs> and it was just very convenient. And so how powerful you are over your kid's life is um, something that I'm, I've been thinking a lot about. And I didn't end up having a girl, and I knew when I drew this comic that I was having a boy, but I made it about an imaginary girl baby I was going to have. And I don't know, it's just fun to be able to change the reality with a comic too. Like I'm, this is, you know, it's part lies and part incredibly truthful truths, right? So, that's how I avoided it. You know what's funny is I was just thinking about that yoga pose, the, the conception yoga pose, which I also did. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was thinking about how I don't have any time for yoga anymore because I have a three-year-old and I'm like, it would be really nice if I had like I had to do yoga every time I had sex, because <laughs> then I could really fit it into my schedule. Right? <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, well, so my first, I have two children. Um, I'll just tell you all the sex that brought the births. Yeah. Um, so, so the first sex was dirty sex during Christmas at my at my parents in law's house during um, Christmas. And it was I don't think anything could have been more like you my of course the you know like we're married and so of course like the grandparents are down below like yeah. Um, but there was something about that that felt incredibly 
uh, dirty slash homey or something. And then this last, <laughs> this last, yeah. <laughs> and then the last uh, baby that I had <laughs> was, <laughs> um, uh, I didn't, we weren't like trying to conceive exactly, so we actually, I found out like three, min three months later that I was pregnant, but I think that it was really boring married person sex, which I actually thought couldn't make you pregnant, <laughs> but it can. Um, and then to actually have the baby, we had sex, um, <laughs> and um, it worked. Um, and the, the orgasm was my first labor pain. And that was insane. And it, that actually was what made me want to write this comic. Because um, it had a good dramatic arc. Or at least a really good <laughs> dramatic arc. Um, and so, uh, so, so sex is fun and good. Um, and part of making babies. <laughs> um, I'll answer this question a little bit by taking, going back even a half step before concept, like getting pregnant to uh, choosing to become pregnant. I never particularly imagined myself a parent, and now I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Um, and so also, like, heads up, death is a big part of my, like, conversation and feelings about birth and life, right? It's all kind of in this liminal space of the hospital where like there's antiseptics and uh, people go there to die and get better and live. And um, my first time in a birthing suite was supporting my sister through her um, nine month pregnant stillbirth. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was through that like unimaginably profound loss of my niece Grace that I was like the profundity of this life that is no longer there made me realize like, oh, I'm. I want, I want to, I want this, like I want to be a parent. I see through this death uh, and through this loss and through this like trauma that cut through my family and my sister. Um, the, also all of the, the other side of it too, like, the, like all of this stuff that we were grieving. Um, and so I, you know, made some plans. I was like, I want to do an artist residency. I want to finish my book and then I'm going to get pregnant. And so I did check, 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 and uh, went to the, <laughs> went to the uh, nurse midwives and got my IUD out, and I was like, okay, this is gonna be fine. Like, they were very comforting and said, you know, it can take like a year to get pregnant. Um, like, it's, don't stress about it, just have fun. And, uh, and I was like, okay, this is good, because I didn't feel emotionally ready. We were just kind of doing some math. And, um, you know, we, uh, have a, you know, had sex, had a vibrant sex life, and like, I didn't even menstruate because I got pregnant. And so I was like, oh shit. <laughs> my, my mom uh, always warned me that women in our family get pregnant, like slipping off wet oak. Um, <laughs> and it's true. Uh, no, so also my family is super Texan and folksy, so um, my mom almost told me not to give birth to my first son because she forgot her jar of dirt from Texas that she was going to put under my hospital bed so that I'd give birth kind of in Texas. <laughs> um, <laughs> so my first, also <laughs> regards to sex, like my first pregnancy, like all of the pregnancy hormones hit me as well as hormones can. I was like, sexy all the time, like really, really horny. <laughs> and, uh, and he was, um, I tried sex to give birth, like he, my, my first son, um, I was 42 and a half weeks pregnant. Um, and had to be induced. So I've never felt going into labor because the second my second pregnancy was extraordinarily high risk, and I had to have a scheduled C-section as early as was safe to get her out. So uh, labor is kind of, with the exception of like laboring and birthing, and uh, which was induced and kind of extreme. Um, yeah, I've never had that. Like I'm at home and what's this happening? And I'm kind of romantic about that because I haven't experienced it, but. Um, I, this is going to be particularly weird, my boyfriend's 10 year old son is in the audience, <laughs> so the car ride home might be a little interesting for me tonight. Um, I'll say this, is that I was, we were 
talking about having a baby for a while, but I was not, I was tracking my, I wasn't on the pill, I was tracking my ovulation and stuff um, in an app called Clue. I think if anyone wants to have a baby, I recommend it. Not, they're not sponsoring me or anything, but it was good. And um, so I really knew my cycle really well. I was on Clue, using Clue for you know nine months or so. And what I'll say about the sex is that um, Ian likes to tell people like it's because the Eagles won the Super Bowl and we had a Super Bowl baby. But it was two months after the Eagles won the Super Bowl baby that uh, the baby happened. And what I'll say is that we promised. Uh, we'd have sex every day for a week, and then we wouldn't try anymore. We'd just see what happened, and at, during that week, we did it. And um, <laughs> it was, but it was having sex for, and I talk about it in my book a little bit, like to have a baby sucks. <laughs> it's, re it's really um, not fun and can cause some bodily things that aren't fun, and, um, but it's just weird because like when you're a kid and you're having sex, high school or wherever and it's like so sexy and it's like then like 15 years later it's like you're, it's like a clock you're watching a clock and you're on an app like, do, 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 what am I feeling today and just that um, contradiction is very strange nature is true yeah <laughs> anything else <laughs> just, uh, I think about moderation well, I, I want to say that none of us would be here writing it if it wasn't for you, Carol. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you guys know about my story? Do y'all know? A lot of knowing. A lot of, in the audience, do you know? Ellen! Ellen! My Go for it. No, Ellen. Ellen was my intern. Hello. Ellen. <laughs> Ellen. Ellen. Julia's here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, I had a baby. How long did you have a baby? <laughs> Excuse me, can somebody turn a Mike Carroll's way? Either one. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Nature's trick. Ellen and Julia. Okay, so um, you said, I'm the moderator. Wait, well, you said you're here because of me. Yeah. You gave birth to me. Too. <laughs> and all of us. Yeah. You saw my work? Yeah. For real? I, I saw that. That one comic that you did about, well, just that one panel <laughs> about the postpartum um, body, which every, that should be up here too. Yeah. And it was the first time. Can you get that up on the <laughs> <laughs> Google Anatomy of the New Mom, Carol Tyler. It's somewhere on the internet. It was the first yeah. time I ever saw anything like that. Honestly. Okay, audience. Can you find it on Google? You can. Okay. Don't go back your phones. So what I did was, you know, what I did was, you know that anatomy chart of a woman and man? So I had a really goofy, we talk about marriage and all that stuff. I had one of those crash against the wall, crazy, everything's insane. What am I doing? Ah, pregnant shit kind of things. Um, where I actually had a vision at conception at the Harrison Hotel in Chicago. My husband, Justin Green, had just come back from Greece. He had a Mediterranean tan. It was so adorable. <laughs> and I was standing there by the lions at the Art Institute, and I said, ooh. And I didn't put my diaphragm in. And we went to the Harrison Hotel. And at the moment of conception, I literally saw all of my ancestors there in the room. Oh. And one of them, I know I'm pregnant. Okay, but then I was, how old, Judy? You know, you were there the whole time in college, but I was, no, 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 no. I only have one over here. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. Okay, and then, what did you tell me today? I said to Justin, I'll tell him my diet for him. I want to have a baby with him. So I threw caution to the wind. We weren't married. And then, then when it turned out I was pregnant, I went to the Planned Parenthood to get my test, because you couldn't do it at home. Went to Planned Parenthood, and they said, you're expecting. And I went, 
oh gosh, hooray. Because Justin said to me, if you're pregnant, I'll wash the dishes. So I came home with dish soap. Get <laughs> <laughs> started, bud. <laughs> All right, so I had a, uh, had to tell my parents, and they were like, oh, you're not married. The child will be a bastard. You can't come home. That was the times. We were in San Francisco. So he and I went to the courthouse in San Francisco and one of his friends was our person that sits there and says yes, married, got married, had the baby at San Francisco General on the sixth floor of his maternity and as the bump was growing, it was awful because I'd have to get in the elevator with the AIDS patients. This was in 1985. So there was, AIDS was in full tilt going on. And so I always felt like strange because I had this baby coming. But you could see these men on the elevator. It was just so sad that the suck on them. They were dying. But I had a baby. Uh, I gave birth on uh, artificial nail. One of the uh, LPNs. Her fingernail fell off. I <laughs> <laughs> couldn't feel it because of the epidural. And then when I actually had gave birth and the placenta came out, it fell on the floor and all the midwives were doing a little twist around the placenta. <laughs> Dustin was like, whoa, what now? Uh, so you asked me about the poster, right. I had a 26 hour horrible labor that was awful. And, and you know how when you have, give birth and you're in the little suite and there's pictures of mommies and babies? Well, I hated that. I didn't want her around. This is over. Get me a steak. I had one of those, I don't want to have a baby reaction since that kid. It took me a long time to, to say yeah. And then I breastfed her till she was 15 months. But when I came home, it was just like, ha! Oh, what happened? Oh, God. You know, flats were coming out. I was wearing these sofa cushion size pads. They still send me home with those. Oh. And the nipples. The clamping down for nursing. It's like, ah! Oh! Wrenches. Wrenches. And all the pictures were like, yeah. <laughs> My baby and a soft focus of the mother and baby. And I was like, <laughs> I just thought, what this? And suddenly my body was called into this horrible, horrible condition. And yet, he wanted to have sex with me. It was gross, so I thought, okay, that's it. And I made this poster. And it shows me with the baggy eyes and the, the baby nursing just blissed out. And I'm just like a wreck. This part is, no, stay out. Uh, they don't tell you about epidurals. They didn't. I mean, they do now. They didn't tell me any of these thigh things or any of this jelly, gelatinous gut thing or right, or any of that. So um, after going through that, I did that poster and I thought perhaps this will be birth control for people because this is the way it is. One and two. I said to my husband, "You get a set." because I'm not going through this again. And you know who told me to have one kid? Aileen Crumb. Because <laughs> she said, Carol, if you want to have any career at all, you can have a baby. Because back then, you know, we're still fighting the fight as women to try to get ourselves going. So, uh... I had a mentor uh, tell me something similar. When I, when I told her I was pregnant with my, with my daughter, my second child, uh, she's like, I thought you were smarter than that. So it's not. She said that. <laughs> yeah. that was a bummer. <laughs> it's, it's different now, but sometimes. How different is it? Yeah. Like that's the question, really. Like. Yeah. Uh, okay, the next question, moderate. <laughs> How different is it now? <laughs> <laughs> no, really, what's the impact? Let's talk about career impact. Of having. A baby. Of becoming One, a parent. One, two, a baby. Or directing. It's impossible. <laughs> There's not enough time in the day to do it, all the stuff. And you can sit there and fight and try to do it, but there's just not enough time. I mean, you know, like I'm not saying like, stop trying. 
cut things off, but recognize there's not enough hours in the day. What I have stopped doing is sleeping. I don't sleep anymore. My son is four now, and I haven't slept for four years. And <laughs> it's, it doesn't help any of the other stuff to not sleep either. So, I don't know, I wish I had something cheery to say about it. It's just that- You're having a clean house. Well, I did that before, so. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I am a person with a day job, a person who still is obsessively excited about making comics. Wait, in a day job too? I'm a librarian at, um, yeah. where's the librarian? Where's the librarian? Woo! <laughs> My other librarian. It's a great job, and I really, really enjoy it, and I like that I don't have to worry about my artwork making the living for me, and I can just make whatever I want and what I think needs to be made. But if you have a job and a creative life and another human who's completely dependent on you, really, really shouldn't even be outside of your body for those next three months, <laughs> and, and all of that stuff, it's, there's just not enough hours in the day, and so I just try to be nice to myself. Nicer to herself? Yes. Anybody else? What do you have to do to do this? Oh, uh, you, well, I got fired from my job when I was pregnant. Fired uh, a few days after I told them I was pregnant. And um, so, yeah, it was illegal. I had a lawyer. Uh, but I was too stressed out to right. do anything. Okay. Yeah. So luckily I found a part-time job nannying another kid. And Hi. through that I was able to get unemployment for the first six months of being a mom, which was amazing. I got to be paid to take care of my baby, which I feel like, I felt like a European person, like <laughs> being taken care of. People were like, I was drinking lattes, you know? And anyway, um, and now I'm, Nanny and another baby along with my baby um, for 30 hours a week. So, and making comics and taking care of my house and all that. But, like, if I, um, we would not have any way to take pay childcare otherwise. That's why for the next few years I'll be nannying my daughter along with another baby. And I'm happy to do it. You know, I'm happy to do that. Um, I was stubborn after my first was born and I was like, this isn't going to impact me at all. And so uh, my first book, uh, my first kind of big book in the Sounds and Seas was published six weeks after he was born. And so I was like, going to tea cafe, pump in the bathroom. And uh, I said yes to a project that asked me to um, make a new book and a performance with animation um, that was going to be performed live with this book debuting wow. eight months after my son was born. And so I did that, and uh, it was about sleep deprivation. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, no, I, um, I have no memories of 2016. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, like that's really funny, and also sleep deprivation is a form of torture under the Geneva Convention. And doing that to yourself intentionally, it was torture. And uh, so I was choosing to work on these projects because I was stubborn. I was like, I'm not going to slow down. Um, because particularly because I'm, very, I'm a very ambitious person. I have a lot of projects that I'm really excited to work on. And the reality now, like I wanted a family that was more than one kid. I have two. And the financial reality of that, the care reality of that is the impact of that is this is my last show for a while. I'm taking a breather. I can't keep throwing my body into the ringer. And, and there's enough to think. Like I'm, yeah, no, 100%. I need to sleep. <laughs> Have you ever been so exhausted? Like I remember I was, I was choosing the chair in Alana, and I was trying to feed her, and I was so exhausted. I meant to push her sleeves up, but I pushed my arm up because you know, the there's that you uh, near the same. There's yeah. no difference between there's just a squat. Yeah. Yes. Well, over here, me, and we're all on the scene. You know. <laughs> You're gonna throw Definitely. up. I'm gonna throw up. So what's your recipe? Um, well, I took I um I try and structure my time working as uh like someone with a good union job might work. <laughs> so like I gave myself 12 weeks of parental leave from uh, working on comics and I just uh, hung out with my baby. And then um, when I went back to work, I was really lucky because I work from home. We hired a, a nanny and she was a, she is a, uh, an artist. She's a printmaker. 
<laughs> um, and it was really cool to have uh, another woman artist sort of uh, helping me and I was like helping support her art and she was helping support my art and uh, we were just like in the house together you know talking about art and you know every once in a while she would just bring the baby to me and I could like nurse him and then be like bye okay back to work um, and it was nice too because I got to ease into work I started with like a day a week and then I went up to two days and three days and um, for a long time I was doing three days a week uh, and he just started preschool uh, about a year ago so now he's uh, in preschool five days a week and we still have my amazing nanny come on Friday nights and we do date night it's beautiful <laughs> it's a beautiful thing it's amazing um, and you know one of the things that I, I really loved my relationship with this person who helps me take care of my kid who's like you know not related to us but part of our our child rearing and um, I remember that I would sometimes talk about it. I was like oh our nanny and people would be like you hired a nanny and it's like you know everything that you do with your kid is going to have some kind of weird judgment you know oh you sent your kid to preschool you sent your nanny. Like, whatever and like there's this weird thing where some people are like oh we don't call them nannies we call them babysitters and I'm like why like what, there's nothing wrong with being a nanny or having a nanny or uh, any of that and like the fact is that we were able to afford uh, a nanny. It was about it was cheaper than sending him to daycare at that point, and um, it was uh, this great situation where I could be at home and building trust with this person that was taking care of my kid, uh, and it really worked out. And I went into parenthood with this expectation that it was going to just blow my work apart, that I was just not going to be able to work anymore, and that I was going to be like, well, it's all about the baby now, and I'm just gone. And so many mothers, so many parents are told this, that like once you become a parent, nothing else matters, you just vanish. (laughs) (laughs) And that's completely not true. I, uh, as soon as I had a baby, I started making comics about him and making comics about being a parent. And it was like, immediately my sketchbook became how I processed parenthood, which is how I've always processed everything in my life. And Uh, I was shocked that I hadn't vanished and and that I could rediscover myself through my work and through my artwork and through friends and uh, and it's just wonderful to to sort of realize that you're still a person after a lifetime of people telling you like this is the end of your story like happily ever after you're gone Um, and then to just be like oh no I this is I still exist and now I just like have this person in my life which is cool Uh, and it's it's been really wonderful it is exhausting and it is uh, a slog a lot of the time but uh, making comics has always been (laughs) exhausting and a slog and like yes I definitely am not going to the SPX after party that goes until 2am you people are crazy (laughs) Um, (laughs) but uh, I wouldn't have done that before I had a kid anyway (laughs) because my bedtime is like 9 o'clock let's be clear (laughs) I keep toddler hours I would do a nap every day if I could. Moderation question on it. I want you to answer, and then I have a moderation question. Okay. Answer. Oh, I have to answer this question about um, what, what was the question? Oh, what's the question? <laughs> working after kids. Oh, working after kids. Okay, so for it, for me, it's been three Nobody else really cares, but if you want to do this, then you have to, then this is the time. And so um, I also think that having a baby is like traumatic. Uh, I mean, it's like y- your life is, it's about something else now. And so it's this profound thing to kind of record and get out there um, and share with other people. And it's almost, I felt like, something that was really worth, like you were saying, processing through work um, and getting those voices out there so that other people can read them is, I feel like, such an important thing to do. Um, And and also making art out of it, Um, like crafting these stories and making it into a really readable story became really, really important to me and worth doing. So, okay, so my first kid, I kind of got a little bit lost in the shuffle in terms of making work. And then my second kid, I was asked to do a a Weekly Village Voice comic, like, right when I was pregnant, and I just said, 
yes, knowing that the one thing I could do per week would be to get a strip out. Um, normal like, person, right? Yeah, normal person. It's like, very good. No matter what, okay. Uh, no matter what, just fucking get it out there. And so, um, uh, what was that time? Oh, five minutes, five minutes left. Yeah. <laughs> um, to, to opening it up to the audience, yeah. Um, so, so um, that was, that really helped me actually, just having that, that structure where, and literally like one of my breasts, I, I would plug in Sylvia to my right breast because I'm a lefty and work, and my, I think it was my right breast got much bigger because of my like posture, like so I could just get it, get it done. Um, <laughs> but it was like a, ma it was a magic thing to have that strip because it like you, I, I got, um, I, I had a deadline that just took over whatever I was going through, and like you were saying, Marty, I have no, uh, no memories of that, <laughs> that first year. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a, and now, well, I mean, I feel like, do you guys feel like time is crap? It's like liquid gold. Like, I'm not really jealous of anybody about anything except for <laughs> how much time they have. Like, sleep um, also. Yeah, yeah. I, tr I, I just, I always need sleep. Like, I know that my worst moments as a parent have been when I haven't had enough sleep. Then yeah. I just make shitty decisions and, yeah. and, um, and, everything seems dark, like in a way that things don't normally seem. Right. <laughs> like your kid's always going to be having a tantrum. That's just, that's your life from now on. Right, <laughs> right, right. And having a 10-year-old, having kids at like two different oh, yeah. ages, a 10-year-old, a pre-tween, and a two-and-a-half-year-old, and navigating those worlds. And then trying to figure out what to tell stories about and what not to tell stories about. Right, yeah, picking and choosing like what's not going to embarrass them later on and like what's your story and what's their story. <laughs> yeah, I played it. That is I don't get to pick that. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, like that's oh, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Say, but how do you choose? Like how do stuff. you pick? Yeah. You you're just going to tell the story and they're going to have to deal with <laughs> you matter. You know, this is what Diane Newman told me. If she don't like what I write, she can write her own poem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's Q and A. You see, yeah, you have the sign up. Q and A. What do you do? Oh, if you have to ask a question, go to the microphone. If you have to ask a question, go to the microphone. There's one there, and there's one there. <laughs> Oh, hi, Craig. Yeah, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Question. Yes? Oh. Yeah. Baby. Lady with, Mother with the baby. Yeah, first. Lady with the baby goes first. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then my stepmom tried to take my baby away from me because of it. And I was wondering, like, I want to tell that story, but I don't want to, like, overwhelm people, and I don't want to, like, make it too much of a bucket of tears. And I also, I'm trying to figure out how to do it without, like, even just casually, like, not just as a book, like, how to tell people my birth story, like, when they ask without just giving them way too much information or too little. This is going to depend on who you're telling. I know. Um, <laughs> like... My birth story changes if I'm looking at someone who's a parent <laughs> than if it does if somebody's not a parent. And I, I don't think that's really fair to people who aren't parents. They should know. <laughs> they should know. <laughs> Everyone should know. But um, I think that what you just did was perfect. It was honest. It was straightforward. It's to the point. And, you know, the more that we talk about this stuff, the more it's understood that we all go through these crazy things when someone new is made. And I think that that's, we should all understand that that's what our origins are, that's what people go through to have babies, and um, you know, to, to understand that what, that's what you went through. I'm always in favor of 
honesty and bluntness over um, like picking around other people's feelings. That said, I don't often drop into casual conversation that I almost died in childbirth, <laughs> depending on who's there, because um, my concern is always uh, to like re-traumatize someone else is, is always like, I don't want anyone to start crying because of something I said, but, uh, but I think that that's cathartic as well. So I think that you just did a very good, eloquent job of telling that story. If it's in, in terms of making some kind of art out of it, is that the idea? <laughs> yeah, I would like to make some art. Like, that's sort of what I do for the baby anyway, you know? Yeah. And now I kind of, like, you guys were all talking about, like, balancing it, but I have not figured it out yet. No, no. don't, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did you say? Balancing Trying to figure out how to balance it. The first thing. Oh, no, 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 the first no. thing. your mind. Yes. Help. You can, I mean, you should say, you get out. Just baby and watch TLC. And just do it. Just tell it. Just Come on. Tell us the story. That's the new baby. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I tell what's important right now. And keep it in your mind. And, yeah. You know, like get get everything out, and then it'll it'll be there. And, uh, just tell it. And give yourself time to heal. That yeah. sounds like a lot of stuff. And love your baby. Yeah. Just take time with the baby. I kept Ooh. notes on my phone in the notes app for a long yeah, time yeah, and no. turned that into yeah. a book later. Yeah. Um, I also keep sketchbooks with like drawings and notes to myself. So take your time. <laughs> and I couldn't walk after I had my baby for almost two months and my boyfriend and my mom had to clean up poop off me. So like you could just, just go ahead and make it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the solution. Yeah. No Once you have a baby, where suddenly, yeah, I could walk and it, like right. I shit all, like yeah. part of yeah. it is shitting. Part of it's yeah. like and um and we're getting shit on. We're yeah, they're, right. <laughs> There's there are all these levels of it that are, people are totally in the dark about, and I think it's just important to to get that information out to people. It, you know, I had postpartum psychosis. But not until, and a lot of people have said they never heard of this, and then others are saying, no, wait, it happened to me. People think it happens right after you have a baby, and some, for some people it does. But I had it when I stopped nursing at 15 months. And I lost my mind, and I almost harmed my child. But nobody, and I wrote about it. Mm. And it's out there. And people come to me and say, I'm not so all alone because you talked. Yeah. You told, it was like you were telling me all about that. So when you share your experience and you share your story, you'll be amazed at how many other people are like, God, I don't feel so all alone. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know, I feel like the more that people tell these stories, the more that we can envision a world where maybe it might be a little bit better. Yeah. Like, yeah. Don't, I, I was always like a feminist, whatever, um, <laughs> before having a baby, but it literally like ripped open the world of inequality yeah. as soon as the baby came into my, like, and Tim, like, had his petty, you know, two weeks of paternity leave, and then he's gone, like, and then you just got to figure out how to do it, yeah. you know, like. I couldn't walk for three weeks after both of them, and my husband had two weeks, and so there was a week where he'd leave for work in the yeah. morning, and I, he'd, like, we'd have set up on a coffee table, scooted up next to the couch, everything I could possibly need, and hope I don't have to go pee. Yeah. I wrote a yeah. piece for the New Yorker about this. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's in the best American comics this year. It'll be fine. <laughs> just do it. Okay. But yeah, just just it's just it's really fine. hard and it's crazy. And why is there this like in totally total in inequality? Like why why is this such a I mean it's wonderful that we're all so conversational about mm -hmm. this. But it's a total, like if there were all men on this panel, it would be a totally different panel, right? Like, like, like the, it, it, to me, this, all of this lays bare the insane inequality of this world. Um, and that's why it's also worth Well, you know, I'll just have to say, we're here, what is this, 2019. Remember, it has changed for the better. Yeah. Because when I was yeah. in your spot, there was, no, nobody was talking about it. Very hardly anybody was drawing about it. Nobody was doing anything. 
So things do improve, and gener every generation renews and they go on and stuff like that. And we'll be, you'll be my age one day, and it'll. And hopefully, we'll say, "Oh, remember one. that horrible time when we didn't have universal childcare? Right. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> How did we do that?" But I'll tell you what else. When I became a mother, I understood humanity like I never had before. Yeah. So if you say, "Well, I don't know if I'm going to have an eight it became the essence of my life. It became the reason why I draw. <laughs> right there. <laughs> no, it gave me a center. It works. Yeah. Wouldn't you say that? Absolutely. Why don't you say it? <laughs> <laughs> it works. Okay, okay well, it's going to end it to work. Oh, let's right. do the next question. <laughs> okay. Hey, that's a wonderful segue. Uh, first, I want to say I'm really enjoying this panel. But uh, and, uh, not to any panelist in particular, just in general. Um, can you uh, talk a little bit about this incredible contradiction? Because on the one hand, there's the world and you know the misogynistic culture that we have, but to your children, you know, and I, you know, speaking as a father, I mean, you know, not that I'm superfluous exactly, but mom is the one that they need, you know. <laughs> I mean, so you're like the most important person in this new child's life, and yet there's this contradiction between the way that the rest of Society is looking at you. So well, I'm going to step away and allow you it to. It is always. Answer. I don't feel good. Mommy. I need mean, this. Mommy. It's all, it tends to just be mommy that they want. Don't you feel like you're the center of their life, their world? I mean, there are. You're connected to your baby first. <laughs> um, and I, the first thing I found that was like pumping was kind of a myth. You know, it was actually easier for me to kind of like. Breastfeed oh, yeah. and work than pumping, which is like pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, what is this? I don't know. I just, I, <laughs> I just, I visualize. Like, I think you have a really good situation where, like, somebody's in your house. There's this yeah. place called, but all of it's like money. Right. Um, the, <laughs> the. Uh, I mean, there's this place called Work and Play, for example, yeah. near my house, where they actually have office space upstairs wow. from. Um, a daycare. Super cool. This it's is like heaven. I, I couldn't but, imagine yeah. that when I was having my kids. Right, right. So it's like I had two trying. hours yeah. on Tuesday for six months. That was it. Yeah. And yeah. then it was all complaints, complaints, complaints. I had to do everything by myself. Yeah. There was no help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think even in. <laughs> I think no, even no. in a very feminist marriage I no that family. I feel grateful to be a part of, like a truly co-equal parent, and still like a, <laughs> so I feel very grateful to be able to say, and even then, like the structural realities of, of living in, you know, uh, yeah, that, that, that patriarchy, right? Like, and the ways also that we've structured our lives. Like, I'm an artist, I want to be able to like have more flexible hours to work, uh, and he has a career that is much more like nine to five, and so I found it, it was disorienting to find myself because I was actively, I'm trying to find the question asker, I was very actively like trying to not be in that place where I was like mommy, 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 right? Like we both wanted this and were deeply invested in it and are very present. And also the truth is at the end of the day, like I'm the one, yeah. Mommy. It's hard not to like love that, right? Yeah. yeah. My favorite thing though is when dads taking care of their kids correct people when people are asking if they're babysitting or watching the kids. I love it when dads are like, no, I'm not babysitting. This is my child. <laughs> um, which is so awesome that that's now, that is like, say it every single time. Don't ask a man with a baby if they're babysitting, please. Yeah. Anyway. Let's give it up for the dads. Come on, dads. Is there another question over here? I have a question. So, um, I have four kids. I can only be here because my husband is doing dad duty right now. Um, and so I just wanted to ask, um, I really, you know, so much of my life is, you know, I've, I have a day job too, and so I'm balancing kids and, and work, and um, and I am trying also to do my own personal work, which I could do with one kid, and I could do with two kids, and then I could do a little with three kids, and with four kids, no. But, um, <laughs> That's already amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Nah. Anyway, um, but everyone's alive. And, um, and you know, I live this experience, and there's so much great story in it, and I love the stories, I love my life. Um, but at the same time, I also feel so haunted, because I feel like if I put these stories out here, 
it's such a stereotypical like I'm this this like uh, I'm a mom so I'm gonna tell mom stories and so I feel like I'm fighting it because I'm like I'm not just a mom I am an artist I'm but human wait, I can tell human story that stereotype I really believe is just like the internalization of the belittlement of the patriarchy exactly. yeah, it comes like, from yeah. a stereotype yeah yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So, really. and so I'm balancing that and, and hey, it just feels so so hard to be I so I wanted to ask <laughs> so have you yeah. just been like yeah I'm totally comfortable just just doing the mom stories or do you feel that like I should also tell them Another story to prove that I don't just have mom stories. Oh, no, no, I tell, okay. what yeah, yeah. tell what's true. Oh, tell yeah. what's true. Say right? what you want. I, Speak your life. Speak my, your truth. my questions that I'm interested in as an artist are questions of fiction. And so finding myself in a place where I felt really pushed oh, to. I just love these. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> where I, but then I have a lot of sparkle back here. <laughs> what, do, what are you telling her? Oh, I was telling her. <laughs> That um, the questions that I'm interested in asking in my work are questions about, about fiction. And so my first time thinking about this profound thing that happened to me was writing fiction about it. And then after that, when that didn't feel like it scratched the itch of getting at some kind of truth, I told true story, like auto bio kind of po but still like thinking about it in ways that I found interesting and challenging. There's nothing wrong with telling whatever is true to you and if that's your your life as a mother like it's such a profound and radical thing to become a parent and i'm hope you tell it thank you we have to we get the wrap it up sign so raise your hand if you have a child <laughs> raise your hand if you're trying to draw comics and you have a child raise your hand if you're thinking of having a child there's still time to get out. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, you came here because you needed to get probably an affirmation about being a cartoonist and doing your work. And there's no right answer. Everybody's story's different. Everybody's experience is different. And I'm here to tell you, at 67, I'm still writing stories. And so don't ever have that idea that because I'm overwhelmed right now, or I don't have time, or I can't get to it, that it's not going to happen. Remember, at age 50-something, I did a book called Late Bloomer. It was Kim's title. But the fact is, it will, there's time. And I am so glad that, yeah, I did some work while she was little. But at the same time, be with your children. Be with your babies. And love that. And don't think that there's this thing breathing down your neck. I gotta get polished. I gotta have this. At the expense of this little thing that beats you. Because you can't get those times back. That's the most precious thing. And at the end of your life, you're not asking for your pen. You're asking for your children to be near.